Hail, hail, the Celts are here. Um, what the hell do we care now? We've just went out and bought half a career and then we've just ran over to Poland for a wee bit of quick shopping. And we've got a few new signings going on. We can see down the light at the end of the tunnel, the new season is just around the corner. And we're here for another episode of the Soria CSC. I am Quinny, uh, joined as ever by McBride Ace. And we've got, back in town as well with us as well, uh, Mark Patrick Rare. Lads, hail, hail, good to see you. Hail, hail, back from the dead. I'm back again. <laughs> Good to see you guys. I'm back for the dead of hangovers at the weekend, now, so that, that kind of counts. So yeah. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, indeed. It's been a it's been a wild couple of days for you, McBride. You've been really enjoying this preseason. Every time I talk um, to you, you're recovering from a hangover. I've well, I've not been training anyway. Not 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 if Sam Book accounts. But um, <laughs> there we go. It was fun at the time. That's what they say, and it was fun at the time. But that's it. Know. Totally, man. And uh, definitely um, what was fun at the time was seeing Celtic play some of the, the J-League teams, which for us is a, a nice kind of when worlds collide kind of moment, you know, seeing uh, Celtic against Yokohama and then seeing them against Gamba. I only got to really catch the Gamba game uh, to any extent myself. Um, we've been on uh, the last couple of weeks, me and you, McBride, going over the bones of those games as they were panning out. But uh, Mark Patrick, I know you're a, a massive J-League fan. Uh, did you catch the friendlies? Was there any kind of take homes from you from from the adventure itself? Um, I, th- I I mean, not especially really, and I and I think like a lot lots of lots of fans, you know, year on year reading into friendlies and and stuff like that, and I kind of don't do that so much because you know you look at the second half and the game against Yokohama, um, what was that? pretty much changed the whole team, you know, so you could get carried away both sides of it, you could get carried away and say we're world beaters in the first half and, you know, we're, you know, d- down there with Still and Albion in the second half, I think ultimately you've got to take the rough with the smooth and I think it's all about getting, you know, perfecting um, aspects on the pitch. I know that a lot of fans would be um, excited about because I, I think a lot of Celtic fans want to see my head on the, the right um, as opposed to the left. I st- still disagree with that. However, that three goals would lend to you know to a lot of the fans' belief that Maeda can go on the right. I just think Maeda, as, as I said actually, and um, I've been away, but I, I said on one of the last shows I was on, I said Maeda is a perfect Rogers player. So I'm not. I wasn't shocked when. Um, Rogers wanted to keep him, certainly delighted that he did. Um, and the same with Kyogo. And we still haven't had the confirmation of Rio, but I think that surely, um, you know, the fact that he's played all these games would tell you that he's, you know, that he's, he's definitely going to be staying. Um, I think as well, like seeing more game time now for um, Abada and, and lining up his role in the team to be a little bit more I would imagine next season I, I've said that I'd like you know I'd like him to play a bigger role in the team um, I always kind of felt last season he, he's got all the ability in the world I don't think anyone's really doubting that from him you know I think you can see his, his ability and his potentials is there um, can you put him on starting big games and rely on him to go and make, make the difference um, I think he can um, but really, I, I'd like to see it from a more consistent um, this season from from Abada. But I would say that positive things, yeah. I mean, you're get, you're getting lots of game time minutes and you know getting some good goals from a lot of those players and um, bringing in guys like Abada and um, Bernabe, giving them. Maybe, I think you can see already Rogers favours them um, more than more than possibly Ange. Um, so. All in all, good. And by the way, Yokohama are champions of that league for a reason. They're a damn good team, you know. Um, you've seen that. I mean, I've went on and on about Elbert, um, who was in the J-League team of the year last season alongside Iwata. Uh, but they've got a whole bunch of players in there that, you know, are absolutely fantastic. The J-League legend, um, Atanaka as well, um, who's, you know, maybe not been at the levels he was a few years back um, of late, but, you know, so that, I think people need to understand that 
Gamba are down near the bottom, so you know it's no big party for beating them, but losing to um uh, Yokohama F Marinos, even although it's in a friendly and I, I know we changed team uh, is is no mean feat. Yeah, no big shakes at all. I'm with you there all the way. And I think as well, that was one of the things I noticed with the Yokohama game, like watching the goals back and everything as well, is you know, those those Brazilian strikers, you know, they, they, they did look the part, you know, against us. And fair enough, it's pre-season and it's the first one, it's the first round out the corner from us, uh, as, as it were, you know, getting, the, getting the, ru- the rust off from pre-season and taking that step from the behind closed doors games in Portugal to something much more resembling the sort of competition levels that we're, that we're going to be expected. But it was a really, it was the first comment that came into his guys actually in this kind of note of, you know, going through pre-season and getting some business done. The Korean guys that we've already mentioned, they were kind of long, list, you know, especially the midfielder Q, he's been linked since December or so, and Jun has been linked for basically the six weeks it's turned around kind of quickly. Um, Navroche still to get officially uh, unveiled. But Plunge McNugget was saying over here that the, the other mob have been boasting about their sign as they look set to sign the boy Danilo from Feyenoord. And like our business has been, I would say our business has been pretty good so far in the terms of like it's like just covering, it's like, um, it's like leveling out all the creases and leveling out all the bumps of the squad. You know, we could use another, another winger just to cover the spot, you know, because I feel we're to really like, Examine doomsday scenario of injuries and stuff like that. Maybe another bit of depth there is needed. Same with defensive midfield, because it is only really a Wata that you could look at as being like a, a CDM, if, if you like, out and out, as well as Navrochi coming into defence as well. Whereas the signings that are getting made across Glasgow are very much like they need to get better quality. You know, they're kind of starting, you know, however many points behind as they were, you know, in there. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those ones where I, I'm. I'm eager to see a better, a, a bigger name signing, a marquee signing kind of come in. Um, but this business we're doing now is pretty, um, is going to be pretty important for the rest of the season, I think. Yeah, do, do you know something like looking at, I mean, obviously we spoke with Sean before about Narotsky. Um, clearly, I, th- I think it's in, in the, the, you know, the position of central defender. I think that profile, there's a bit. Of, I guess the jury's out on him. Um, if you're going to play him as a straight out central defensive player, I reckon if you look at last season where he played in the extra classa with, um, a, would you call them Lega Warsaw? A lot, the majority of his play over the season was on the right back berth. I wonder if Rogers just, and I hate to turn this into the get on um, Anthony Ralston show, because I do really like Anthony Ralston, but I just wonder if he just doesn't fancy him. And the reason that I would I would back that up as well is that he played a water at right back. And you think, is he just trying anything out? Um, to play a water you know, right back, you're right. Yeah. You know, is he is he just trying out players at right back um, in the event, obviously, that, that Alistair Johnson um, is not available for a certain amount, of, you know, for a kind of longer amount of time? I, I think we're all in agreement that when Johnson comes back, he's the outright number one at right back. I don't think um, he's going to he's going to drop Alistair Johnson, but I just feel there is that bit of doubt about. You know whether he does give Ralston game time, um, so that may well be in the thinking um, with speeding up that transfer. But I would tend to agree with Sean on the profile of a central defender for uh, Norovsky that he's not any better than what, what we've got, in my opinion. Um, but the the other two boys, um, I have seen. I actually seen a lot of them last year. When they were in the uh, K League One, um, Hyun Yun and uh, Hyuk Q, and um, Hyuk Q was in the army team, um, and he was okay. Not the best player in the army team, in my opinion. In fact, not even in the, the, the top three in the army team. I think there was much better players in there, including the likes of Hyun Young that. Ilsan and Park Jae-soo, who's now 
went to uh, to China. Um, Hyun Yun last season, I don't know if you managed to see him when he played for Gangwon. Um, did, did any of you get a chance? No. Last season, Hyun Yun at Gangwon was frankly unplayable. Um, he was absolutely phenomenal. I think he ended up with like um, something like eight goals and yeah, he said eight goals and five assists. Um, out and out winger. I think he's in the, some of the top, um, as Sean's mentioned previously, in the top percentiles for press, high press. So clearly that's what's brought him onto um, Celtic's radar. This season, when I've seen him, and this is just my opinion based on what I've seen this season, and um, the caveat is that Gang 1 are terrible this year. In comparison, they've got the J-League Team of the Year, sorry, K-League Team of the Year's Kim Day 1 up front, who has been absolutely rotten this season. I I mean, statistically been terrible. But Yang Hyun Jun has not been impressive as he was last year. Um, so I just hope that it's not the guy that I've seen in the K-League this year and it's the guy of last year that we can work on at Celtic. Um, I don't think he'll come into the team straight away either. I think that he's going to be a squad player. In fact, I think both of them will be squad players. Um, again, could be entirely wrong and call both of them guys wrong, but I think they're no better than what is currently, you know, in our starting eleven. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you say that because I was speaking to somebody yesterday about Marco Tellio, somebody from Australia, like just also the sort of people we can bump into doing all this stuff. And um they were, you know, their, their reaction was, oh, yeah, Tilio, he's he's went to Hibs, hasn't he? And I was like, no, he's went to Celtic. And they were like, oh, really, Celtic? Oh, I don't know if he's, <laughs> don't know if he's good enough for Celtic. Was that was the kind of the reaction I got from that? So hearing the, the kind of form that maybe John is bringing in and the, what you said about Q, I'm pretty sure we've had that discussion in the group chat already. Um, that sounds familiar to me, certainly, and I don't think it's something I've said because I've definitely not seen him. Um it does feel like, yeah, th these are guys that aren't here to improve the first 11, but here to maybe develop, maybe push the first team and maybe just fill in some gaps throughout the season. I think the Nov Novroche one, but I mean, Brad, I'll be interested to get your take on this because I know you're very invested in it. But it did feel a very quick turnaround and it felt off the back of, you know, conceding six goals to Yokohama. Um, maybe he wants to see a left, you know, Kobayashi, Starfelt, Welsh. There's no Carter Vickers here. I don't think any centre back has really won the manager over. But it felt like we've played a bit of pre-season and he's went, get me a centre-back. What do you think? Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed with the, the business so far, but there we go. Um, I think obviously Jota's left and that that's a big fee and everything. And I, I don't think we've really replaced him quality yet, uh, in terms of quality yet. So obviously I've been linked with guys like Tete and, you know, the Brazilian sort of winger and things like that. And I just don't feel as if we've really bought anybody of any out and out quality yet. But centre back wise, I mean, I think we're I think we're light in that area. I don't think Stephen Welsh is good enough at this stage. Um he, he was playing for under 21s for Scotland and everything, but I just I just don't think he's really good enough at this point. Kobe Ashi obviously has had some chances, wasn't really doing that well. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't read too much into the actual sort of six four defeat or anything. I think obviously it's just taking a wee bit of time for Rogers to come in and assess who he's got available and things. And one weakness we have in terms of the centre halves is probably somebody that's a bit more two footed or can play out a bit from the back. But from the stats and from seeing this guy and everything, obviously he's young, but I don't know if he's any better than Starfield or or Vickers. We do have a gap there at the moment because Vickers isn't fit yet. So I don't think he's played any minutes at all. So, yeah, you've you've got to cover that situation even for the first couple of games. You Aberdeen away second game, and then I think Rangers away in the fourth game. So it's not um, it's not a, a, an easy start either. And um, but business wise, I think we've just signed a lot of squad players, like just guys that are projects along the lines of the sort of signing strategy that we've had. But I think. Overall, pretty disappointing in terms of who we're signing, and obviously we're not here to talk about Rangers all the time. But Danilo and Seth Wentes are, I think, they're better players than what we are signing at the moment. So let's not get too cocky because they're they are good players. Totally. You know? I mean, like, uh, look, 
I, I'm pretty much 100% in agreement. I mean, I've seen Danilo and Sifuentes, um, and within the, I mean, we are the so rare Celtic supporters club. Within the so rare stratosphere, Sifuentes is, is, is class. You know, he's, he's been very, very good in LA. Um, I, 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 I'm concerned. I, I can see Sifuentes in the Tillman type mould um, at, at, at Rangers. Um, and yeah, I haven't, I mean, I've not seen Marco Tillo, the Australian boy, but I've seen the the, the, the two boys in Korea. I've not seen the um, Polish defender, but I've, I've, I've had a good look at his stats and his, you know, the, the data on him. Um, and it's not exciting. Uh, for sure, I, I'm also underwhelmed by the the type of player. I mean, some of the players that we were linked with um, seems to have just kind of dwindled. Um, and I don't know. I've heard from like a couple of friends in and around Celtic, like um, they're waiting for the marquee signing. And I think there's that kind of genuine belief, a bit like McBride says, like is something going to happen? Because this so far is just a bunch of squad players. Yeah. When you see names like Tete and things, I think it's because obviously Jota's left and everybody will admit Jota was one of our best players. And I think from a style point of view as well, you know, if you look at Abad and Maeda, they were excellent in that Yokohama game, but it was quite interesting seeing them playing against a team that doesn't just camp in. Like, you know, maybe they, they would be good options in the Champions League, maybe away from home, playing more counter-attack. But when you're playing at home and you play against Ross County and they put you know, eight, nine, ten men behind the ball. Jota was a guy who could beat a man or, you know, he could make something happen or he could scoff outside the box or that type of thing. So I just feel as if, um, it does feel as if the, we've got squad players and stuff in, but the overall quality of the first team hasn't actually improved yet. And that's that's kind of when you've got that Champions League money and you've got 25 million or whatever sitting burning a hole, the objective is to... To improve, um, keeping the is huge. Though we we're talking about Meller, and he, he looked excellent in those games as well. So even if we can get another season out of him before he inevitably goes to maybe the EPL or whatever he's been sort of generally chatting about, it'd be good to get another year out of him. Um, and we've done some good business getting Kyogo, Maeda, and um, signing new deals. Abada seems to be firing again, so that's all good stuff. But um, I think we're if we don't get anybody else in, apart from the defender, I'll be pretty disappointed with the window. So let's hope we've still got a bit. And we have we've got loads of room for four or five weeks, but we don't have that much time before the season actually starts. That's the, the sort of um, probably a disappointing um, part of it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Because in terms of like, what we are both talking about, names we've been linked to previously in the window and how they've developed, one name I was right excited about and thought it had some legs was uh, Carlos Borges. And he is now like on the cusp of signing for West Ham for between 14 and 16 million. And when I hear that now, I do thoroughly believe we must have been, you know, that's our that's our kind of price range, the top end of our price range for like somebody of that kind of standing, you think? So, and I think that's probably just been a wee bit too far out of our reach, perhaps. And we've not, we've, we've let that fish go, as it were, you know? So that tells me we're probably signing one guy for 12 to 13 million is probably what's, left on the menu or left on the agenda um, from kind of reading in between the where, lines of what's going on. Yeah. Where would you, where would you say now, just looking at that? Cause I, I agree. I think that keeping Kyogo, Hitati, Maeda, my opinion is massive. I, I really think that's, that's huge. Obviously we've got McGregor's agreed to a longer term deal. There was noises about him potentially, um, taking the big bucks lure of down south, but he's not. Um, so I can see you've already thought about this. So this is yeah, this, he's is, good. <laughs> this is this is how you, I was going to ask. How yeah, do you see the team? How do you see the team lining up? And also, where do you see the the need for improvement in there? Do you think Bernabe will start over Taylor? That's what I was unsure about. Actually, I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I would say. It's probably a coin toss. I think it's. I think in competitive games, Taylor drops the ball. Bernabe's going to get the chance, no problem at all. But it's will he actually start Bernabe and let him drop the ball for Taylor to pick up? Is maybe Sam undecided actually on that one in particular. 
think that other interesting yeah. point. I don't think we really need a, a centre forward anymore because if you looked at Dyson's movement in those games, I think he could easily deputise in there for Kyogo. Um, yeah. And obviously, you've got O, who's a different like type of option in there as well, who's maybe more of a sort of hold up player. Um, Haksabanovic yeah. hasn't really featured much from the the sort of starter games, has he? So, but that I mean you know there could be various reasons for that. Everybody's all got um, some minutes and stuff at, at, at certain points. Um, Bearing the buying tail, I mean, I just find it really hard to actually make any decisions based on stuff. I think you're only going to know how that's going to work out once you've seen um, Ross County and Aberdeen, in all honesty, you know, because anything could happen. You've got another friendly, you've got a testimonial, and then, you know, we're we're all kind of guessing a wee bit unless there's any sort of noises that that come out. And obviously, Starfelt and Norrocky, if that's what you call them, they'll probably start um, the Ross County game, given that CCV's not played any minutes at all. But hopefully, we'll start to see him soon and he'll be working his way into the team as well. Because out, out the centre half is a guy you really wouldn't drop, I don't think, is is, is Carter Vickers. So yeah. Yeah. I think I think like I've seen in the in the footage I've seen um through Celtic's official channels, um I've noticed um Rogers spending a lot of time um and looking quite warm towards Burnaby and um, uh, Abada, which it just makes me I just have an inkling that you might see more Burnaby this this season. He's obviously came last season, he had his little car incident, um, and you know, he never really kind of got involved in, in the first team to the level that you know you would, you would have expected. I think it's probably fair. You say that defensively, you would take Taylor over Burnaby going forward. You'd probably argue Burnaby's probably just edges him. Um, but I guess that will be all will be revealed in that first fixture. If I was to go for my instinct now, I would say it's probably 60 40 Taylor just for that position come game day one. Um, but yeah, I think it's 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 going to be tight. Um, I think it's going to be. I mean, it's interesting to see where. I mean, is, is Rogers stated where his plans to put Narotsky? Um, or, I mean, because all all of the profile data that I've seen is that Narotsky would, you know, has has been playing um, more as a kind of fullback as opposed to central defender. Um, Have we even signed them yet? <laughs> well, there's a picture of three guys at Lennox Town, and we've seen the the full pictures of two of them. And we're just—I think it's paperwork. Somebody asked the question earlier. It must be just paperwork yeah. finalising and stuff, you know. Yeah. Is what I think. So I mean, left left footed. I mean, why? Again, that's one of those anomalies, isn't it? A left footed player that plays right back. Um, they do happen. You have you have uh, left footed players that are playing right wing as well so it's not it's not that absurd um but you know i think i think that uh i could see i could see his lining up possibly even if i mean i, I mean if cc ccv isn't fit in that first fixture is that what he's looking at is he looking at um having that cover where he's going to you know he's he's going to play Ralston or Awata at right back in that first game um, and, you know, put Narotsky and um, Starfield. Because, I mean, CCV isn't back, isn't He's not going to be back for that first game, is he? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. So for the first game, I think, you know, you probably see Narotsky and Starfield possibly, possibly Awata. I think... You can't. I mean, Awata is top draw last season, J League Player of the Season. I mean, he's no mug. Um, yeah, I think if Awata plays, we'd we'll probably get Burnaby. But because when you get this kind of thing going on, you want you want the wide guy really out here, don't you? You want that line hugger of a fullback. Well, that's if that's you're if you that's if you in here. Well, that's well, that's if you're playing Angie's system, um, which I would well. agree with you. 
you would probably. But we kind of seen that in preseason. We've kind of seen a bit of this in preseason, I would say. Well, I mean, he's only played one game. Um, Fair. There, uh, but I, I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me that, I mean, possibly he's gearing up for those games where he knows that CCV isn't going to be playing. Obviously, he knows that what is it, Alistair Johnson's out for seven, eight weeks um, that we know of. So. You know, we're going to be getting into the first European games knowing that that right-back position um, against top-quality opposition is something that needs to be nailed down. Personally, I'd, I think that Rogers doesn't want to put um, Ralston into those big games, which is why he is experimenting. So I think you probably are looking at um, Iwata, um, Narotsky, or brings Narotsky into the middle and plays um a lot on the right. So I'd probably go go for that. Um as your starting um players there and Taylor or Burnaby on the left. I think the central midfield guys pick themselves. I don't think it's going to be anything other than Rio, McGregor and O'Reilly. Agreed. So the question then becomes where do you spend twelve million quid? On this, the only position, again, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but the only one that jumps out at you is the one in the 18-yard box. It's not been moved, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of if you're going to spend a wad of money to really upgrade one of those positions. Because like you say, the midfield's free. Like, you would need to spend way more than what we've got, I think, to buy a guaranteed or a really solid contender to get in that midfield, really. If a wad is not getting in the midfield, I think a wad is, just as, I think a wad is the level required to get in, and he can't get in. Um and again, the forward line, we've got two to a position. We've spent good money there. We've renewed guys and extended contracts. Abad has had a little talk-to-talk, -talk, a little heart-to-heart -heart with Brendan. And uh, they're all bought in for this season. So it really then does come back to defence and goalkeepers, the only place to spend money. Yeah. He's not going to replace Hart this summer, is he? I mean, he might he might bring him back up. But I think all of the language that I've heard from Rogers is telling me it's Hearts for another year at least. Yeah. I think we're all in agreement that that would be a position, you know, to change again. Rogers is going to play a slightly different style. Um, is he is is he going to be as reliant on that movement as, um, you know, as as Ange was? I think it was imperative under Ange Ball that we had a goalkeeper that could play like that, and we went a full, you know, we we went that whole time there with Hart basically. And in some big moments, costing us because he wasn't able to um, play that way. So I would, I'd like to bring in another keeper, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I'm certainly not to replace her at this short time. Yeah, I remember Brendan's here for three years as well, as he said, big part of merchant. Um, but yeah, Hearts out of contract next season, so that's a kind of good excuse to make a change, if that makes sense as well. You know, so. The money's there, so maybe maybe we go out and spend that money in January. Maybe we we go out and spend that money next um, summer in the on the goalkeeper position. But I, I still think even looking at that, that um, I know Hak Spanovic had some good fleeting moments and things last year, but largely he was kept out of the team by Jota. So another really good winger um, or that type of player like Tete or whatever we were linked with would make sense. These links with Scott McTominay and stuff like that, that's just paper talk. That's just complete and utter guff. There's no way we're signing Scott McTominay. So it's six million pounds a year or something at Man United. And when moves are getting linked with him, it's talk about 30, 40 million pounds to Newcastle. We can't afford wages like that. So that's a non-starter. I don't know how you guys feel about the Kieran Tierney links. I mean, obviously he's come out now and kind of almost a bit against Arsenal in terms of saying, well, I missed loads of games last season, but I was fit. So I don't know if that's a kind of thing of saying, well, people are saying I'm not fit, but actually I am fit. Um, and if it was a deal that, that made sense to the financial side of things, then he's definitely an upgrade on, on Greg Taylor and, and Bernabe at left back. So, uh, or could play left centre back in a back three or whatever, all that type of stuff. So, you know, if it's the right deal, then you would definitely take Tierney back as well, but again, is it just is it just paper talk because he's a wee bit unhappy? Is it realistic? I don't I don't know whether or not it actually is or not. Um, but I, ho I hope we get one good quality 
player in between now and the window shut and otherwise I don't feel as if we've had a great window overall. I mean I don't think just, 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 sorry, go on, on you go. No, no, I've you. I I I I think that I mean personally I think Tierney is just a nose hair away from world class territory. I mean he is utter I mean I, you look at his performances in a Scotland jersey, he is utterly impressive. Um and I think Arsenal are conscious of that. I I just obviously they they fa- they fancy Zinchenko over him um and they fancy um I've noticed they've even been playing the um the Japanese boy ahead of him as well. I'm pretty certain that they're not um they're not gonna be dragging him into that first eleven anytime soon. Um that being said, they've spent big money on him and he's on big wages. I don't think that they're gonna fall down the, the route of you know sentimentality about oh it's Celtic his favourite team, so we'll just pay half, you know, that normal one that some clubs do, yeah. they pay half his wage to let him go on loan. I don't think that's going to happen here. I think that's a lot of Celtic fans think that's going to happen because it's Cairn Tierney and we like him and we'd ideally like him to come back. Um, it, I mean, it would. I would love to see Tierney down that side link up with the Japanese boys. I think that would just be insane. I can't see it happening but for the same reasons that McBride said. And also... Um, absolutely, McTominay's not going to come to Celtic. He'll probably be on silly, silly, silly money at Man United. He will end up if he leaves Man United, which is still not an absolute given. He will go to a Newcastle or someone of That's that kind of right. level um, on huge money because Scott McTominay playing for Scotland has also been at that mental level, which can't be far off world class as well. I mean. I think, I think we're at the point now where a Scottish national team, and I know this is not the Scotland supporters club, but you know, we are at a point with a national team where some people need to stop with the negativity and criticism and say, we might just be a bloody good team, you know? Um, and I think we need to, to accept that some of those players are on that um, that level. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that those are the kind of signings we're going to get. I mean, if you look at the signings that we are getting, it's guys that are slightly off the radar or the bigger clubs um, or the bigger clubs have had a look at them and went, no. I mean, just to take the point about the J-League, there was a whole raft of players that that we've spoken about before and some of the players that I've mentioned. Like, if you look at Kaneko that played for Consadoli Sapporo, um, who I've raved and raved about um, on the Odyssey stuff for a long time now, um, joined the uh, Dinamo Zagreb. That was still slightly under the radar. That transfer that was well within Celtic's kind of level of you know of transfer. Then you see um, Tatsuhiro Sakamoto. We spoke about. Um, you've been a fan for a long time as well, Quinny, who spent the last. I mean, they, they got relegated in Belgium um, with Ostend, but I mean, he was a standout player in that league and. You know, he's went to Coventry. That, in my opinion, was in Celtic's grasp. He, he's going to be incredible down in that championship for them. There's And there's we could go on and on and on. There's so many value players out there. Maybe they just weren't on the radar of Celtic, but they're certainly, you know... <laughs> yeah, i seen the one before about um, uh, the, the Korean boy being better than Awata. Not a chance. Not I didn't even take offence to that. <laughs> Not, I've, I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen them play last season. He wasn't even the best defensive mid in his own team. Never mind in Korea. Um, no chance. Awata is a special player, by the way. I don't think that Celtic fans have really seen um, enough of Awata. I would love to see him be given a good run of games, and it is, it's difficult in that three midfield. Where are you playing him? Um, Maybe you would have to, and I know this is something that would offend a lot of fans, maybe you would have to push McGregor forward or push Hattati even further forward in there to, to play Iwata, but I think Iwata is... You have to play him. I'm not I'm not excited about seeing him as a right-back. I don't know about you guys. Are you, is that, would you be happy to see him there? Because I certainly feel that's misusing him as well. Um, 
It's one of those ones. I, I'm just as you're talking there. I've got a little flashback to Brendan Rodgers' press conference where he was asked about inverted fullbacks and such, and he used Emery Chan at right back as his example of his ability to handle that kind of tactical nouse. And actually, he's been doing it for a while as well, for what it's worth. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was maybe somewhat by design rather than by accident. I know Johnson's injured, and if Johnson plays, that probably does change it. But um, I don't know. You know, it's maybe something in there because McGregor, even I've got it laid out like this, but when, for the games I watched, it looked much more like this in the games itself. McGregor was actually able to roam a bit more. Rio was picking up some passes. Turnbull, when he played, was actually rather deep also. Um, so I don't know. I think there's probably a few bits of wiggle in here depending on who's playing and such, you know? Yeah. Do, you think, do you think we could see a Wata with Rio and McGregor in front of him? I, um, I think I could see Q doing that because he's bigger physically. Like, I don't know if I'm being lazy by making that conclusion, if you know what I mean. But when I was trying to lay this team out, there's a video that'll be out on the channel later this week. But I think if you put Q in here, because you do see the height of him, and I say, I know that's a very lazy thing to say in modern football. So before you bite my head off, I'm aware of it. But um, I think you would feel maybe a bit more comfortable with a guy that's six foot two behind two wee guys that are going to run around and do a Javi Iniesta tribute act because that's what they would do you know they would just run around together in a little pair with the ball you need a big guy in there a big boost gets type to do you know, my, be very lazy here obviously with my examples but <laughs> i mean I don't, I don't i don't want to be savage about this right but cues i mean I, I haven't even looked at, i'm just taking this off the top of my head from when i've watched them but i'm pretty sure you look at cues dueling in comparison to a Watas, I'm pretty sure it's going to be it's, it's going to be butchered by a water. A water, um, in terms of his, uh, I'm just putting that in now. Yeah, tackling and defensive play well ahead of of Q. Um, so I think just if you just take the basics of dueling and you know in defensive play, a water mops him up. Um, I think like height wise, I guess possibly for aerial duels I mean I don't even know what, how that's looking in comparison but I don't think he's a massive yeah he's slightly better in aerial duels um, so he's like he's like 50% 52% aerial duels 45% on ground duels but ground dueling for that position is not great if I'm honest I mean in particular the way that you'd want our team to play which is quite you know, fluent through the middle. You'd want someone that could break it up and emphatically break it up and get possession of the ball, not just diving in and losing it. Um, I think I would... Awata is a ball winner. You know, I mean, Awata must be dueling... Um, I'll just double-check what he's dueling at, but he has to be dueling certainly at a far higher level than that um, for Celtic. So Awata's dueling... Okay, this is a smaller sample size but Awata's dueling for Celtic and ground dueling is 71% doesn't which surprise me is massive in comparison um you know so his total dueling is 58% so i think i think like the ground dueling is the bit where you want to make sure um in that position that you're you're winning possession of the ball so in my opinion i would i'd be far more comfortable with Awata if that's where we're going to play him in sure. that position. Um, but by the way, I'm not saying um, that the big man's are, are, is useless. I, I just don't know where we're going to play him because... Um, On the bench? <laughs> I, I have I, Honestly, I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled by him. I ha, I've, I've watched a lot of the Gim, uh, Gimchon Sangmu last year. Um, I don't get it. I really don't kind get of, why we've signed him. This conversation has given me deja vu of Idiguchi a little bit, you know? Like, it's kind of like, where does he go? Where does he play? You know? Like, why have we bought him? <laughs> He's like everyone else, kind of. That was a little bit different. Um, yeah. But it's the same kind of deja vu I'm getting. I just so, wanted so, to mention I, this while it's here. So if I, if, if, you get, if I can throw this out quickly. Great comment here from Lanky. If you've seen it on social media, the Celtics are here is the official shirt sponsor of Catholic United down in Essex, which for any of you keen Celtic fans out there will know 
and that's Cameron Carter Vickers, like grassroots club. They wear in green and white hoops and all that good stuff. So Celtics oh, are here, the shirt sponsor for them this year. So uh, make sure you go and follow Catholic United and we'll go and we'll cheer from them from Glasgow this year, from everyone at the Celtics are here. So if you've caught that, get involved. Sorry, Mark. Awesome, Mark. That sounds, sounds good. Mark. That's, that sounds amazing. Um, just just the last uh, point on on that kind of uh, you know defensive midfielder conversation. Like even um, I don't know if some of the followers will have, have kept an eye on Hideguchi as he's went back to Japan to play for a Vespa. He actually broke his leg. No, he broke something like pretty early when he went back. Um, yeah. but he's recovered and he's playing again. Um, the the, the bionic man. Um, seeing his last, seeing his last four or five games for a Vespa, unbelievable. He has been unbelievable. He's been to be fair, he's been more box to box playing for them. Um, but again, I take your point. Why did we sign him if we were never going to play him? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get. Um, I don't get what the point of that was. I mean, they, to be fair, he took a couple of ba bad defeats in those games as well, and his yeah. performances were not bad. Um, Adiguchi, uh, but I think he, I think there's always been a good player there in Adiguchi, and I think um, going forward he'll do well for uh, for a Vespa. But yeah, I, I can't. For, I mean, I hope the big man proves me wrong and goes on and dominates in that position, and we all get his so rare card and we do well out of it i just don't i don't know where 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 we're going to fit him into the team i, th I think a lot is an obvious one because johnson and ralston are both injured so i think like when you're playing against ross county do you really need somebody that defensive there probably not but what other options have we actually got as, as a right back option at the moment? Like Stephen Welsh sometimes fills in there. He's a, a centre half. So I think it'll just be a case of a while I'll cover those initial games whilst Johnson's out. And then I think the interesting thing with a while is we're a wee bit too open in the Champions League sometimes, I think, in the middle of the park. So it's great, obviously, having McGregor and Rio in there and, and Matt O'Reilly and stuff. But, you know, will, will we actually take our medicine and, and play some more defensive-minded players in there at some point where we actually just decide that we're not going to concede three and four goals away from home and maybe play a bit more compact and play a bit more in the counter-attack. So who knows what the, the actual tactics are. But, I mean, people obviously haven't seen a lot of Awata, but we've seen a lot of Awata from previous seasons, and certainly I had his card on and so rare, and I'd actually had sold it, and then he was MVP, and then ended up buying him back when he came to Celtic because I knew he was... He was really good, and he's one of these guys where he can play centre um, center back, he can play defensive mid, and obviously now he's filling in at right back. So he's, he's really a, quite a, a sort of versatile player as well. So I just think a, a while will fill in there, but that, that's pretty much all he's doing just now, right, until Johnson's fit. And even with Ralston, he's not made any of the, the actual squad so far, so I, I wouldn't read into it too much that he doesn't rate Ralston or anything. He just doesn't fit, I don't think, at the moment. So otherwise... He would probably be the favourite to play right back, surely, even against Ross County, Aberdeen, etc. You would, you would have probably have thought that being his natural position, he would play there. Rotten at the end of the season. I mean, he had a really, really bad run of form, but you know that that can happen as well. You know, a couple of bad games, etc. He's he's done a lot better in the past, filling in for that position. So, so there we go. I mean, when when Ange when when Ange first came to Celtic, I mean. Ralston was one of the best players in Scotland. In fact, I think Ralston statistically was the best player in Scotland for like I, the, like up until Christmas of that first season. Um, so I, you don't become a bad player overnight. You know, he's clearly got a he's clearly a great player, and you know, obviously, our fans will um, always remember that last minute goal against Ross County away which but he, he, he rose at the back post what he was at the back post he rose yeah it was um anyway smashed the ball into the back of the head the net with his head um but yeah I, I, I'd like to see Ra a Rousen resurgence and get game time um hopefully that can be for the start of the season um it seems like a bit of a mystery I don't think it's going to be Welsh um 
as I've said for some time, I, like Welsh has been on the radar of so many big clubs. Like there was definite interest in Portugal for him. There was a bid made from Udinese, which Celtic rejected. Um, so I, I don't I don't know what the the plan is um, for Welsh that we don't rate him, but we don't want him to go. I mean, I don't quite understand where where that goes uh, with Stephen Welsh because he is respected by other clubs. It's that homegrown thing. I think it's maybe a bit of a, a noose round his neck where it's you know like. That's why Bain gets the contract, and then you're maybe looking at like the boy McPherson that played right back for a, a bit um, against Gamba. He looked okay. Obviously, Summers and Vata have been getting more minutes, but that homegrown element is definitely a dynamic in the squad now with the amount of foreign talent we are importing. You know, and I know even we've not relied on a lot of academy graduates, but there's been a lot of British players in the squad for the last like 20 years. You know, uh, and this is probably the time where it's been probably the least. Um, Kind of apparent even recently, actually, we had quite a good wee crop of Scottish players when it was like Christy Armstrong, Mackay Stephen, Brown, McGregor. That could have been like the midfield for a season, you know, Griffiths and stuff, you know. So, um, so yeah, I do think that plays a part in it where they get a nice wee offer and then they're like, ah, oh, but if we sell Stephen Welsh, then we're not going to have enough homegrown players, then. <laughs> you know. So, how many, do you need? how many do you need for a squad? Do you know, I think out of 25, you need to have at least eight right. off the top of my head. Or seven, if you include Scott Bain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Seven plus Scott Bain is the Joe way we've Pauly. built it now. Um, and probably James McCarthy as well. He probably, but again, you need to then register these guys in the 25. And the squad is getting quite busy now. You know, there's a lot of heads yeah. in there. So are we going to register some of these homegrown guys at the expense of a Q or a Hyung Jun or something like that? You know, that's... Yeah. that's you get like Ralston. And, do you not get like a, a kind of like a B-list type thing where you can register like guys under like 21 or something as well, guys like Summers and Vat. I can't remember how it all works, but I mean, obviously, because there is some some talent there, eh, obviously, but as you say, you're bringing in these guys, you're spending a million and two million on them, you're going to say, well, you're not in the, the squad for this because we're, we're registering Ben Summers or or whatever. Um, I think you're right, though. I think there's it's part of the registration process. There's homegrown players, but then there has to be homegrown players who are under, I think it's 21 um, as well. So you, obviously, the, I think I can't remember the exact amount. I remember this from the old football manager days. I don't know if you guys remember from that. Um, but uh, there's someone mentioned there. It's five homegrown players. Um, so I think you'll probably, you'll probably see that there's uh, yeah, so there's five, so five homegrown players. So that'll be um, developed by Celtic, and then the rest will be, you know, it can be just in Scotland. Um, ah. from the, you know, from they've they've came through clubs like in James Scotland. James McCarthy and Bain and these yeah, guys. so they yeah, so they all fit into that category. Um, Taylor, Calmac, Calmac actually qualifies, doesn't he? Of Absolutely. Course I. Yeah, so I mean, we've probably got more than we thought of. Yeah, exactly. Could probably get a decent enough team out with that. Um, but yeah, but to take your point about the other guys registering for for Europe, I mean, we did have that issue before, didn't we? Because I, I think that he didn't register the Gucci yeah. for Europe. So you know, I, I, you are kind of conscious of like, I mean, I hate to be negative about it, because but it's kind of a wee bit of history, um, repeating itself. You know where you're signing players and they don't play you know and and we just seem to have massive previous for that where i mean we go back to like um vacuum bio and you know a lot of these yeah. guys and marion fed who's now playing for Shakhtar and the, the ukraine national team and you know so there's a lot of guys that were just signing and personally don't think they were giving them the, the enough of a, an opportunity maybe that's because you can call it poor recruitment or um you can call it you know we're we've recruited too much so we don't have space to, to even allow those guys a chance um i don't know um where you would file that but the reality is is that they just aren't playing so many of these guys that are, that are being signed and i think your hunch about um you know the big 
uh, cent defensive central midfielders, Hyok Q. I mean, it just kind of screams out to me of that bench is going to be getting sat on quite a large amount of time. Um, I think we'll see Hyun Jun just purely out of the fact that, you know, that there will be an element of rotation slash, um, you know, constant substitution, but swapping out your central midfield, you know, like a defensive central midfielder, it's not really a massive feature of rotation, is it? Yeah. No, I agree. You kind of want these guys. It's, it's this kind of back years where you don't really want to be subbing guys out. And again, particularly if it's only one or two goals in it, you want to keep that kind of reading of the game, knowing the run, getting the, you know, the grab of the guy's jersey and, and knowing where everything is. Um, and it is more the, you know, these are generally the five guys, these are the five positions that generally get subbed more often than not under the five subs rule anyway, you know, and you're trying to keep tempo up and such. So we've not got Kyogo in this because we're not really even too sure what the whole shoulder situation is. I think he is actually okay to play at the moment, but it is just, you know, you're just kind of going to bed every night praying it doesn't happen again um, if you've got Soria cards. Um. <laughs> Cotton wool. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Yeah. But it doesn't take long, like you say, before you... You take one guy out, you maybe move them around through a game, and then, yeah, I think a lot of the forward guys, who's on screen here, and then we've also got Kyogo, Hyun, and Forrest. I think all six of them are going to feature probably 90% of games across the season, whether it be from the bench or, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it does make it harder then, because if these guys are, let's say, every game, those guys are all going to get subbed, whoever they are, regardless. That's only two subs left then, you know? And then who gets a yellow card? Who gets injured? You know, whatever. So, yeah, these other positions, minutes are going to be, um, you know, well-earned, let's say. <laughs> yeah. What, what I'd like to get, is, see, we were obviously, you, you weren't here last time, Mark, Patrick, but we're talking about the lad that's went and signed for Storm Gratz, the guy who played with Motherwell right back. Is it Johnson? His name was? Max yeah. Johnson, yeah. Yeah. Why are we going and signing guys like Quan and stuff from the K League and not signing a guy like that. So we were we need a right back. Well it looks like we need a right back. We've got two injuries at right back just now. We're going spending four and a half million the guy from Poland. We're spending one point five million in a guy from Korea and all that. And we don't sign a guy like that. I just don't like I don't I just don't understand the recruitment. Sometimes it's like you kind of see the wood for the trees. But I bet you he does really well at Stormgrats. I bet you in a year's time or two years' time, he's going for three or four million or whatever to Serie A or whatever, and we'll be going, why did we not sign him? Well, I don't know why we didn't sign him, because he's here playing in Scotland. He looks like a good player. You could have brought him in there. He'd probably be quite happy to come to Celtic and play more of a squad rotation role, all that type of stuff. If he doesn't really work out well, you could have sent him out on loan after a couple of months or whatever, and we just let him go for nothing to Austria. I don't get it. Like, I, I get having worldwide recruitment and all that type of stuff, but we could have signed that young guy for nothing. I, I, that just baffles me. I don't understand that um, when when players like that are available. Really don't. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the and there's been a lot of them, by the way, uh, yeah. lately. I think, I think like, a lot of people get caught up with it. And, and let's, let's be honest, there's a lot of negative... Um, kind of there's a lot of negative vibes coming from English about oh the Scottish teams don't produce the same players they used to and we play up to it and go oh no no we don't no wait a minute here we're starting to comfortably grind out results in games that maybe we're not even playing that well and something that I've not experienced in a long long time and maybe not even ever um, having to watch the utter misery of Scottish teams um, do terrible so you're, you're looking at that Scottish national team and you're looking at Hickey, by the way, a guy that we could have had also for pennies, who's a Celtic fan and came through the Celtic ranks and then someone in their um, super wisdom said he's too small. Um, and we also let Andy Robertson go in the same, he's too small. Um, and we almost, by the way, I, I'm sure he's already know this, but Tierney was all right, was close to being told that he was um, not uh, going to be renewed while he was in the youth team, and it took Ronnie Dahlia to um, specifically ask to bring him into the first team. So you've got to say, 
that, by the way, that's just guys in our own academy. Never mind, you know, going into the other academies where then you start to look at Ryan Gold, at, um, who's at Dundee United and also could have came to Celtic. We let him go to um, Sporting Lisbon where, you know, kind of didn't work out and now he's an MLS star, right? Um, but, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and there's so many of these. Chris Doig that's went um, abroad, even... Lewis Ferguson, as much as a lot of Celtic fans would hate me for saying this, would have done brilliant for um, Celtic and a lot of Celtic fans calling, slagging him off and all that. No, these guys are class. Port Ryan Porteous, another one that I've openly said for years and been had Celtic fans arguing me with online, you'd be terribly be proven correct again. Absolutely class. Brilliant for Scotland. And Max Johnson's the next one. And by the way, there's more of them. So um, we've got Connor Barron at Aberdeen who had a poor season last season with injuries. Absolute class. There's there's even more. There's the other young boy at Aberdeen who's going to is wonder kid material, Alfie Bavage. Um, and by the way, this is doesn't even take any deep research to find these guys. They're all of the um the scouting that is available on all of them. Uh but I, I fully agree with you, by the way. Why are we not taking them? It just doesn't make sense. You know, Aberdeen get Leighton Clarkson, right? And, you know, anybody that watched Le- Leighton Clarkson see that he's he's a player. I was quite surprised that Aberdeen were able to even sign him in the first place to go into Liverpool, let him go, and that's that's a great signing. And you see guys like Dylan Levitt, you know, obviously went to Dundee United and then now, Hibs have signed him again. I think he'll be a really good signing for Hibs as well. And, you know, Hickey and, and Josh Doig, are, I think, are both better players than Bernabe. And we paid more money to bring Bernabe here than Hickey left Scotland for, or Josh Doig left Scotland for. So even after you let Hickey go, even after you make an ass of it and he's playing for Harps, he was available to be signed for 2.5 million. And what do we do? We, we go and we spend. Three million or the equivalent amount on Bernabeu, who I think actually might still um, come oh. good. But no way! Anyway. Someone's tried to claim that David Turnbull is better than Lewis Ferguson. I, I I can't believe I'm reading that. I mean, I mean, it's just absurd. I mean, look look at Lewis Ferguson is now being tracked. AC Milan wanted to sign Lewis Ferguson. You you can't give. David Turnbull away. I mean, surely that's not been taken seriously. You can't give David... No one wants to buy David Turnbull. That's how great he is. AC Milan and Juventus have been trying to take um, Lewis Ferguson. I know we don't like Rangers and that's fine. That's okay. But let's not just make stuff up because, you know, um, we don't like those players' affiliations. Lewis Ferguson is an absolute class player. Um, But to follow on from your point, McBride, um, about the fullbacks and someone mentioned in the comments there about Ramsey as well that just went uh, to Liverpool. I think he's now on loan at Preston. I don't know if that, is that is that right. He's went to Preston. Yeah, I think he's yeah. on. Yeah, so he's been sent out on loan. And then you've got Nathan Patterson, who again I don't want. I know Rangers players. He's, we can say that they have good players. Um, Nathan Patterson is. Uh, I, I would agree with that comment about Turnbull. Yeah, um, the but Nathan Patterson. Um, Oh, the absolute AC Milan absolutely did want Ferguson. That is yeah. that has been. I mean, you don't need to go far in the scouting circles to uh, to arrive at that truth. Um, but the you look at the, the great depth of fullbacks that Scotland as a national team has. I mean, I mean that is just incredible uh, ability that we've got in those players. But going back to the ones that you know, could do a job at Celtic. I mean, all of them realistically could. Could we attract any of them to Celtic Park now? No, because they're too expensive. They wouldn't come to Celtic under those wage conditions. They're all now on that. Um, maybe Doig, potentially, but would Doig come back to Scotland now that he's got he's that just moved. I think he's just moved for 4.5 million, or certainly there was talk of it. So I think he signed for Verona and then somebody else has signed Oh, him. has he not went to Bologna? I think he's moved. So yeah. that just shows you. I mean, like you know, in Italy they 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 like the profile of player that we've got, and for some reason we like the profile of player that's coming from another 
um, area in maybe Asia. And I know it's been really successful. Obviously, Hitachi's been a great signing, Furu's been a great signing, all that type of stuff. But sometimes it just doesn't really make sense why we're going into games and we've not got a right back. We don't have a recognised right back, and there's guys available on free transfers and stuff that would be a really good, a really good signing. But I, I think like these guys that have come in have come through our scouting system and things. Obviously, that's always what happens, right? But Rogers is only in the door for about three weeks or something. I mean, he's not been here long, so you know, we need to give it a wee bit of a time for him to shape things. Um, but aye, I just that some of our recruitment sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think. So. Yeah, no, I'm there as well um, with that one. I think with the yeah, whole I mean, Ferguson Turnbull one, it's, 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 it's a bit interesting. Because what well, sorry, what I was going to say, but the whole Turnbull Ferguson thing, what I find interesting is for me the the main difference in the two of them is the amount of minutes they play. Like I find it impossible to have, like that's why I just laugh at these ones because I, I I don't think you can really compare the two because Turnbull's no playing, <laughs> you know, and I don't think you would get the kind of levels out of Ferguson that he's got if he did go to say like Avengers and wasn't the main guy in Scotland in Glasgow, you know, staying down the road for you know. I think sometimes these guys. They, they get to that level because they make the step, because they go out the comfort zone, they go to a new environment. So, like, I know it's dead easy. Like, it's easy, easy for us now to talk about, like, the hickeys and the doigs and whatever, but <clears throat> there's every chance that sometimes that they get to that level because they've went somewhere, they've, you know, the city has miles ahead of the SPL. You know what I mean? There's no, there's yeah. no two ways about it. No one's saying anything other. But it's the, it's really with football development, it's minutes on the pitch is what makes and breaks it. And we kind of, I think, you know, that's kind of where I landed on it last time, McBride, when we're talking about the Max Johnson. It's like, you know, let's say we do sign him, but we still have Ralston and Johnson. So between the two of them, like over the season, how many games does he get? Eight or nine. Whereas you send that guy to Stroom Gratz, he's going to play 40, you know, and he'll be a wildly better player after 40 games than after eight. Yeah. I would have signed him and sent him to Stroom Gratz and Lone. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, well. not. I mean, that's a lot of By the way, can it- but see, see the thing is though, right? And this is this is where, like, because actually, and this is where it sounds like outrageous when you make these comments, right? But I think Max Johnson's better than Alistair Johnson. It's just that because that sounds outrageous just now, because people haven't seen much of Max Johnson, that it, they're like, oh wow, how, how could you say that? Come back in two or three years when you see Max John, uh, Max Johnson develop, and you'll go, that guy was right, um, because it was the same. What I said the same thing about Hickey. I said the same thing about. Kieran Tierney, when I first seen him play for Celtic, and P- fans were saying, put Izagiri back in. I was like, no. Um, you know, um, I just think that the, these younger guys have got the ability. I just want to pick that up. This is my last point about Lewis Ferguson, and then I'll shut up, I promise. Um, I just think, infinitely, that guy is a box-to-box midfielder, is more talented than... Um, Pretty much most Scottish, well, to be fair, we've got a good supply of them in Scotland. I think that the part that's slowing David Turnbull's development, and by the way, I don't want to come down overly critical on Turnbull. I've not been his biggest fan on this show. I've said it for a few times before. I think David Turnbull needs to find somewhere that he can nail down as his own. And I just don't think that he's got the engine to get box to box. So if you're talking the minutes he plays compared to... um, uh, Ferguson as an example, I think it's a poor example comparison to be honest because I don't think that they're similar players I think Ferguson's box to box Turnbull isn't, Turnbull kind of lies around that, that pitch, I don't think he's got the energy to get up and down that um, Ferguson does, but I think I think Turnbull has to reinvent himself as a player that he you know, he's not shown at this stage, um, and then he, he might get the transfer or the loan to somewhere where he can show that I think it's going to be really hard for him to do that at Celtic. I don't see it happening at Celtic, and I think he'll eventually run out of steam and he'll end up at a club in the English Championship. Probably. Mm. Um, we're getting a lot of good shouts in the chat as well for the sorts of players that we should be kind of hunting out and attacking, attacking midfielders. We've spoke about wingers and defenders and other little bits and pieces around it as well. But it does feel like as we get kind of ever closer to the beginning of the season... It probably will maybe wash away a little bit and it'll be like, oh, there's games on, oh, there's Champions League on and we'll be doing deals again at deadline day and it'll feel like we've been, you know, that's, that's one of my main worries at this point is that 
we felt so prepared. We're qualified for the Champions League. We don't need to go through the qualifiers and let's hope we get the money in, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> kind of thing. We don't need to do that. We, you know, we've came into this summer and then we'll get the jackpot windfall. We mentioned it before coming on stream, but coming into this summer, the number one player any Celtic fan would have said, oh, he's probably leaving for mega money, would have been a badder just with the, the links he had and the scoring minutes to games and all that kind of stuff that was going in his favour for all the money ball teams out there. But we've got bigger than what I thought the Abada windfall would have been from Jota, you know, so like, and that happens so early in the window. It feels like we've been in such a good position. And we've had some chats in here as well saying like, you know, why are you mentioning uh, the, the blue team in any way, shape or form? But I, I'm personally, I'm a big believer in know thy enemy, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, keep, keep your enemies close and all that kind of jazz. And by the way, like we mentioned earlier on the show, definitely not a season the way the business has went now to be overconfident. I think this is going to be a, thoroughly a season where the derbies decide the, you know, the, the long and short of it. You know, there'll be less slip-ups from them, I think, but the amount of, you know, the amount of decent signings they're actually making. But they're starting from behind us, obviously, so these are kind of building up things rather than increasing on where they're at. But the worry is they bridge, and I hate to use the term that they used last season, but here I am halfway through it. They bridge some sort of gap, <laughs> maybe. And, you know, I, I think... I didn't actually get to answer this point earlier, but it kind of wraps into this a little bit as well. But with Kieran Tierney, it's the same with Brendan Rodgers. Like they are the best, I think, on paper, if you could say who's the best left-back Celtic could actually sign and who's the best manager that Celtic could actually go and attract and like the open market just of who's available and who has a career at the moment. It would be those two guys because of their affiliation to the club or whatever. Um, but I don't think Tierney, again, to, to kind of sink on that, like I don't think... Because Tierney is the best one on paper means he's the right one for right now, you know, with the money's on the age of him, whatever. Um, but equally as well, I think that's what Brendan Rogers gives us. That even with these kind of smoothing of the creases, signings that we're making the now, you hope he can elevate the existing uh, players up a gear ahead of what Ange had them. But I do worry that on top of that, you do need the Sinclair, the Paddy Roberts, the, you know, the, the, bit of magic player that can just come into a game and just something will happen because I don't really see that in the team from a bad uh, I love Maeda Kyogo I love all these guys but I don't really see much like something will just happen out of nowhere you know they're all very good team players if you get me um and it's maybe what Haksabanovic maybe threatens to deliver without really doing it yet I think but, that's probably I think you're you're right and there I think you're you're because there's no there's no out in it. I mean, let's I call I I, I called them the the greedy player before. Yeah. Um. Right. So and and that's maybe the 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 kind of maybe a kind of cheap way to to label them, right? But realistically, I I I would say that the two obvious greedy players we had last year would have been Jota and Haksabanovic. I also place Abada in that realm because Abada does like to dribble. Um, hold on to the ball, cut inside. Um, I think that there's room for him to develop in that. I, 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 I think that um, with Jota going as well, that'll probably f free up more freedom for him to go and actually express himself. And I think he'll be allowed that. He'll be afforded more time um, to develop and express himself. And I, I would be surprised if, you know, by the the first. Uh, game that he didn't start um this this season just I just want to pick up on that point as well that you said about uh obviously rangers and i i don't think that we should be complacent for sure because i think that if they sign the players that we think they're going to sign and not to mention not to forget that last game that we played them away where we were just terrible i think it was i think we all agreed that we shouldn't have played a weakened team especially celtic should never be playing a weakened team against them, should always just be going full steam to beat them. We want to win. Don't want to give them any reason to celebrate. Um, I think that if you look back to Rogers' record against them, it was pretty damn good. Um, and I I think that the style that Rogers more than likely is going to play is more counter-attacking. So I think that we're going to probably allow them that little bit of um, time in the ball but other teams in Scotland will be afforded a little bit more time in the ball than they would expected under Ange I think this is going to be a higher scoring games under Rodgers and I think we're going to 
we're going to win uh, more games more you know more comfortably. I think if you look at how magnificent Ange Ball was, there wasn't as many absolute emphatic doings to teams as maybe you would have thought. Um, under Rodgers, I, I tend to remember a lot of them domestically. By the way, I'm not saying for European games. European games, it is what it is. We need to get better. But I think domestically, we're going. There's going to be there's going to be big victories uh, under Rodgers, going by the way that he's played previously at Celtic and the way that he's set up at, at Leicester. Ross County will be a good one. <laughs> five or six. By the way, off the bat, I, I would be yeah. surprised if that was any less than five now. I, and I, I know that's sounding cocky, but I genuinely would be surprised if off the bat he came out, statement, first game, five now, bang, adios. Take that, Malky. I'd love it. The last couple of uh, league openers have been high scoring. I think Aberdeen last year was only 1 0 or something. Memory serves me right, but I think generally um, the league openers have been pretty high scoring. And yeah, Ross County just about scaved off relegation. So on paper, like you couldn't really ask for too much of a better team to, to come and open the season. By the way, there's a lot of people watching this live. I just want to say at this point, details are unconfirmed. But guys, we, we might be going to Ross County and not confirmed yet, but. I'll probably have some tickets to give away to some of the people watching this as well. So at 23001, make sure you go up and follow on any social media and watch out for that. But if it's 5 now, guys, we'll be on some podiums. We'll be winning some cards. What do you think? Yeah, I think I I, I do. I, I fancy I fancy us heavily that first game. I just, I, I, I think there's a, I go back to the way that, you know, Rogers played before. Um, I think we've got better players than we had there. I know we had some cla class players, um, particularly big Moussa Dembele. Um, I don't think Griffiths is anywhere near the kind of quality that we've got just now. Um, I just, I think that we are, there's, I think that Rodgers will be excited to get this group of players, especially the attacking guys on the, on the, yeah, I, I think that's the, there was the, someone saying there that Ange had a couple of bigger um, victories. I'm not suggesting that big victories didn't happen, but not as often as they happened under Rogers. I would um, agree with that. It did feel like a lot of threes and fours. We didn't, you know, we got that nine one time, but we didn't ever get like sixes and sevens ever. You know, and we were spanking yeah. teams for months, man. But we were just rotating and, and letting teams off the hook with it for some spells. So, no, I get that. I think we could be a bit more ruthless under Rodgers, for sure. Yeah, I, and I just think that that first game, so statement game, like you said, it's an opportunity to get, you know, strikers, attacking players off the mark, get those goals, um, you know, uh, just get us moving rampant um, and attacking big scores. Get the What's pressure that? on. Anything else, guys? Don't think so. Looking forward to the season starting now, though. Missed it. Time. Yeah, I missed it. Time. Oh, oh McBride, well, I wanted to ask you this, right? And this right. is maybe a bit relevant. We've not really did enough of this on, on this show yet. So let me just go and get the screen, right? But one thing I wanted to ask you, McBride, and you, you, might, actually be, you might actually be annoyed at me for asking you this. That's all right. So, <laughs> so what I noticed today... Or yesterday, is this guy. Are you yeah. going to go for it? No, nah. no. Nah. I just, I just. Um, obviously, it'd be good in terms of cover and stuff, but um, no, nah, I think I'm probably just going to leave it. The reason I'm asking McBride this is because he's got the other. He's got a Taylor, and also yeah, Taylor hasn't got it. Yeah, you kind of need the. It'd, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to lock it in. Eh? I mean, obviously, if if I did get it, then. If he wins the place or whatever, but I, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about Kieran Tierney and stuff. So I imagine you go and spend like a couple of thousand on that, and then like Celtic signing our left back and then near a player, or whatever. You know, I mean, like the 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 super rares. Ah, uh, no, the super rares way overpriced in terms of availability. But I think, ah, I think okay. somebody paid a mad amount for the super rare at one point where he was he was supposed to be playing in a midweek and there was nothing much else on and. It was only going for like say two or three hundred, and somebody 
went bonkers and paid like 650 quid or whatever for it. But the thing with thing with Ben Abai from an SO5 point of view is that he's he's all around sort of scores are not really that good either. You know, so you see he's had games where he's had like assists or he's maybe picked up a goal or whatever and he's hit like sixties and stuff like that. So he's not really a heavy scorer as well. If you look at the games he's come on, he's done negative bases, right? So he's come on and he's had like um minus four, minus one, minus seven. He's had two games with sixties, um, where he just had no all around. Um so I mean I think as an attacking player at at Celtic he, he offers a wee bit going forward, but he's not a brilliant um SO5 scorer either. So no, I don't think I'm going to push out the boat for that. I just think especially because we're in a transfer window, it might have been a different decision maybe in about um, four or five weeks' time, knowing that we haven't actually signed anybody else yet, but you could easily go and buy that and then Celtic pick up another left back or whatever. So so yeah. If it's going for like really, really low amount or whatever, then I might sneak in there. But I've managed to talk everybody out it so far. So you, know, you never know. Maybe <laughs> if somebody wants to go bonkers. I mean, if I, as you know, when I'm buying a card like that, if I'm buying a unique, I'm really specific about somebody I want to buy, right? You know, that O'Reilly was the one where I went, right, I'm gonna gonna kind of push the boat out there. Furuhashi is not the best SO5 player in the world, but you know he scores loads of goals, you know he starts. If you're going to buy a unique or whatever, you want somebody that's going to play. And at the moment, you don't know whether Bernabe or Taylor's going to play or even maybe Celtic buy somebody else. So probably not for me just now, but we'll see what happens into the new season and hopefully we'll get other ones out. Maybe we'll pick up Calmac or something at that point and give you a wee bit of a challenge in yours. Maybe. Hope, let's hope not. Stuff <laughs> 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 <Stuffed> then. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope not. Because with some of the cha- like, oh, if we could be a wee bit so rare for a second, we're kind of been on for a while. Um, but like with the changes that came out this week, now that you know the top end of the game, like McBride, you won't be able to win your Robertson again next season. In essence, um, I think firmly well, like because you all star rare, all star unique, two supers. Oh yeah, yeah. You, Aye. you know Aye. the kind of real change up there. So, Aye. so I feel that. Probably see the and I heard other people saying this in other so rare shows, but the the quality of super rare coming down might increase a little bit. Like you might get an odd super rare Neymar and Mbappe that now comes down from a D one position. But I also think you'll probably lose a lot of any quality that there was in some of those uniques because they'll probably then be pulled up, you know, to go into those ones. So I think D two or All Star could be good fun. Um, and uh, yeah, please don't get McGregor and play it. In that division, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> if you're going to spend that, if you're going to spend a good amount, then obviously what you know with Cal Mac is he's just committed, right? Uh, he's not going anywhere now, so um, you know, Ber- we could think that Rogers really likes Bernabe. He could just be putting an arm around him, try to manage him, and the next minute he could be going bonkers and getting swallowed and out the squad or loaned out. You know, you just don't know. I mean, obviously. We're, we're only a couple of weeks into Rogers being here, right? So how things work out, it's a wee bit more up in the air after a manager changes. But guys like, obviously, Cal Mack, you know he's under a long-term deal now. Hatati, obviously, I'd love to have a really good Hatati card as well. But, you know, by next season, if he's not away to the EPL or something, I'll be I'll be pretty surprised. So if he's here this season, I'll just be enjoying seeing him here again for an R season and a, a good transfer fee probably if he leaves next season so so there we go but um yeah, yeah. Bernabe is no for me at the moment I don't think uh, I just don't think he's really a, a good SO5 scorer either to be honest so yeah uh excellent I think that's about us guys thanks very much yeah. and uh chat great form chat was a lot of fun this uh tonight I look forward to seeing you next week good and, uh, well. <laughs> all good banter that's what we want if you no, all agreed it would be boring yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah, no, it's good. Good, enjoy the chat. It was good. Hail, hail, and yeah, see you hail, next hail, time, guys. Take care. See you later, guys.